Hey guys, as always, thanks for stopping by. I'm already laughing. You are not going to believe this. I literally just finished reading my notes and they were a complete mess. And I get to the end before I press record and I'm literally laughing. You're not going to believe this entire story. Here we go again. I cannot believe it. Once again, we're doing it again. We already did it last year. Black Rifle Coffee Company does an interview with the New York Times, and yeah, they stick their foot in it again. I'm going to walk you through it. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about it, but stay with me until we get to what happened last night. Black Rifle's Evans, his response on it, it's, 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 it's on Instagram, but it, oh my gosh, it's amazing. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that, and I'm going to tell you what I think about it, but it's not the end of the world, but it sure is funny and a little disturbing. And it's a little bit funny, and I'm doing this in one take no matter what. I'm having a great time today. I think it's funny. We'll see what you think. Buckle up. Here we go. Hey, today's episode is brought to you by all of you patriots. Thank you for every thumbs up. Crushing that thumbs up. Thank you for that. Leaving a comment down below is a lot of fun. And it's your chance today to tell me that I am, as I was called on Instagram about 10 minutes ago, a fud. I'm going to be called names today because of today. So today's brought to you by you and your chance to call me names. Let her rip down below. It's true. I talked a little bit about last night about the whole situation. I was called all sorts of names on Instagram today, and it's funny how polarizing this is. I don't think the situation is all that complex. Now, the short version is back in the fall, and some stuff was said about the Kyle Rittenhouse and this and that, and you know, are they two A? They, they being the coffee guys, are they two A? And we dealt with all that back then. It wasn't the end of the world. Matt Best gave me a very polite phone call one evening. He was, I found him, and I said this last time, I thought he was uh, respectful and thoughtful, and I appreciated it. He was cool. And plus, Matt Best is cool. Y'all know that it's a cool brand. They've got great swag and all that stuff. But then they went and they done did it, y'all. They set up a meeting or they accepted an interview with the New York Times and it didn't go as well as they thought. Why didn't it go all that well? Because they gave Evan Hafer an opportunity to give direct quotes. And they quote him directly and I, I mean, it's the New York Times. Already people are typing, well, you, you shouldn't believe anything they say. I kind of believe direct quotes. I would think a journalist, and I'm using lowercase, or maybe, you know, journalism is dead in America today, but I will think if they do direct quotes, I think that person probably recorded it and it was easy just to type it out. I don't know. I wasn't there. Now, the big question is that people are talking about is, is this company or the, or the Black Rifle guys anti to a doubt? Big doubt. I'm going to say, for the record, no, nah, they're not. Absolutely not. That's just silliness. But people have gone that direction so far. You're going to see some concerns here. There is some concerning stuff. Now, last year it all happened. But then I think we're at the point now where they're trying to expand the company. Understandably, I'm a capitalist. Go earn. I'm, I'm fine with them expanding to a larger market. That's amazing. Separate video, we'll deal with this another day, but this community, the two-way community, is very anti-capitalist in so many ways. We'll deal with that another time. So they want to expand. Obviously, they want to expand. Of course, they want to go meet with the New York Times and expand their market. I'm cool with that. But to expand to a larger market, you have to be able to appeal to a broader audience. And therein lies the trouble, and that's where we're going to be heading here in just a few minutes. So they allowed Evan to talk, which I think is a bad idea on any day. And then it, things just kind of spiraled out. It even opens, the whole article opens with Evan double talking, large, large audience, big market, ride that fence, kind of in the middle. The middle's a dangerous place to be these days. He opened with, well, you know, I kind of was open to the idea that the election was stolen, but then, no, no, it turns out it wasn't. And he hit both sides. That's how the whole article opens. And I think that's kind of uh, indicative, or maybe telling is the right word, of where they're at because they're trying to meet a larger audience. And again, to do that, you've got to have a broader message. Now, there's other things in this article. There's one thing that I didn't find that interesting was the whole idea of St. Michael and all of that. They just said, yeah, we were misquoted. We think St. Michael's cool. He said that, uh, Evan said that he carried one overseas. Respect. No problem. I didn't think it was all that interesting. Maybe it is. Maybe let me know politely after you call me FUD. Let me know down, down below what you think about that. I will say openly, they're not anti-two-way. No, that's just silly talk. Is this overall funny? Yes. 
Are they anti-two-way? No, of course not. Now, here's when we get to the part where I started. In the article, they had to address Kyle Rittenhouse. And I know that with some people, it's a polarizing topic. I don't think it's a polarizing topic. I think it's an interesting conversation. I think it's worth having a conversation about. I think we can learn from it, but I don't think it's polarizing. I think it's pretty clear cut. So if you don't remember, Rittenhouse showed up in some social media after he got out and somebody had maybe, I don't know, slapped a black rifle shirt on him and they're really into swag. And they came out, uh, the coffee guys came out and said, hey, we didn't do that, that wasn't official. We're not trying to make a bunch of money on that. I'm fine with that. Yeah, this, we're not trying to profit from that. That was one dude trying to use it, maybe, I think, use his affiliation and you know make some affiliate dollars. I don't know. But they distanced themselves from it. That wasn't the problem last fall. My problem was not Evan donating to the Obama. He said he lost a bet and had to donate to Obama. Not the end of the world. It's that he came out, and I've seen the screen, screenshots, allegedly but I have seen screenshots of it, said, oh, at first went defensive. Oh, no, 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 that was Photoshopped. Oh, uh, that was Photoshopped, man. Deer in heaven, uh, photo, Photoshopped, man. Uh, then he came out, uh, well, actually, it was, I lost a bet. <laughs> you can't make it up. That was last year. That was my problem. That was it. I don't care if they, that made sense to me saying, hey, we're not, we didn't slap that logo on that kid's shirt. But in the New York Times article, Speaking of Rittenhouse, Evan Hafer said, and I quote the New York Times, <laughs> the Times, it's such a repugnant group of people. Talking about people that support Rittenhouse. It's such a repugnant group of people. It's like the worst of American society. And I got to flush the toilet on some of those people. That's where my eye does. That, my eye goes like that right there. Oh, I can't believe he said that. Yeah. Now we got a problem. At this point, and somebody said on Instagram today, and it's what I said last week talking about Lucas and, and Daddy Plaid, Grand Thumb and all that. I said, just like Aaron Iverson, we talking about Lucas. We talking about practice. Why are we talking about this? Concerning this situation today, it's not that we should be talking about Chipman because somebody on Instagram said, why are we talking about anything besides Chipman? I don't know, because there's other things that we need to talk about when somebody comes out that much, possibly, potentially, against conservative values. Possibly anti-two-way. I've said twice already he's not. But maybe it's worth having a conversation. Plus, this is what people are talking about today. It's such a repugnant group of people. <laughs> ouch. I say ouch to that. Now, here's some reality. Let me give you... Two things of reality, one I've already mentioned, they're trying to expand to a larger market. You've got to frame all this through a coming of age, moving outside of just you know selling coffee on with through YouTube ads and really cool Instagram stuff, and Matt Best holding a spear, looking divine. I mean, he's talking all massive and ah, he's all cool. They're trying to move towards brick and mortar stores and being legitimate in the market. They are moving towards brick and mortar. All those brick and mortar stores are right like on the front door of army bases. Smart move, smart, very smart move, respect. One of the realities they're just trying to, you gotta frame it and look through this expansion to a larger market. The other part is the truth's probably somewhere in the middle. Did New York Times misquote or, or skew it? It's the New York Times, of course they did. That's part of it. The truth is probably, the reality is truth's probably somewhere in the middle. I mean, I personally, my opinion is that Evan Hafer is a verbal ding-dong. He shouldn't be allowed to talk. But I also don't think that they're, you know, running around like donating to every town. No, stop it. I said last fall, Brovet's going to Brovet. I think they're a bunch of Brovets and they make ungodly amounts of money Brovetting and appealing to Brovets and riding around and selling coffee to dudes that are riding around in big old trucks Nothing wrong with trucks, but big old trucks with Punisher skulls on them. Now we have a problem. Love trucks, Punisher skulls, not so much. I think this, well, let me say this. It's, I think it's very important to say that this video and me and what I think is nothing about cancel culture. Buy their coffee or don't, I don't care. 
I spent this past weekend at Brownells. Had a great time. When you walk in in Iowa, you walk into their massive retail store. It's gorgeous. I have friends there. Love those folks. Had a great time. Before you get to the rifles and before you get to the Rudy Tooty point and shooties, there's a black rifle stand. I think it's cool. I, got, I have no problem with that. Now, there's going to be guys in the comments like they did last fall. I'm never buying it again. It, it doesn't matter. They doubled in the last year. You and your $7 that you and Alice buy of coffee a year does not matter. It doesn't matter to them at all. Uh, I don't know how they feel about it. Oh, wait. Yes, I do. It's such a repugnant group of people. It's like the worst of American society, and I get to flush the toilet on some of y'all. All right, so they're going to flush you. But do I have a problem with you know my friends at Brown? No, Lord, no. Not at all. Buy it or not buy it, it's fine. It's totally fine. I think their swag is gorgeous. I think the New York Times article said 15% of their sales last year were was swag and merchandise. It's gorgeous. Great, great looking stuff. I've never owned any of it, but I think it looks fantastic. So I've got no problem with any of that. I do have a problem with maybe, potentially, being called repugnant. Maybe. Now, I want to say a couple things. Or how about just one thing? Why is Evan still talking? You go through all of that last year, and yet he is still being allowed to own a microphone. Yes, I know he is the face of the company on some level. Yes, I know he's an owner and founder of the company on some level. But somebody, a handler, needs to get a hold of this guy and say to the side of his microphone, click. I think that they got where they're at through, we're bro vets, big spear, machine gun, drink all the hot smoky coffee, girls in bikinis, awesome, bro, we all served in the military, yeah. Which I said last fall, all that's cool. But all of that is what got them to being a $200 million company and they're like, let's just keep doing it that way. And just like last year, they had the same response. Did they evolve? Nah, still cavemen and with spears. Last night, Evan took to Instagram, and it's the only reason I'm making this video, because it. I hope y'all are still with me. Those, those of y'all that are still here, oh, ha, ha. Evan gets on Instagram and is like a deer in headlights. Kick hand, I, he may be a baller in the boardroom, may be amazing at roasting coffee. I, he's, he's a Green Beret. Works for the CIA. He knows what he's doing. But not when it comes to the idea of interpersonal discourse. He's like a deer in hell. At one point, he literally puts candy in his mouth while he is doing damage control on a $200 million company. Do they get a spokesperson? Nah. They get some dude in the middle of it. I just want to talk to y'all a little bit. I'm like, I'd expect that out of me. I've got Gomer Pyle on vinyl over my shoulder. Yeah, expect that from an orangutan looking dude sitting in Appalachia, but not the face of a $200 million company on his personal account. And this is where it gets awesome. The video is still on there. You can go watch it. It's nine minutes. I've watched it twice. Three quotes from last night's video. One, this makes me so happy. <clears throat> It's gotten more difficult to navigate the culture war. No, it hasn't. It's not gotten more difficult whatsoever, if anything, because our culture has lost their bleeping minds. It's gotten absolutely easier, absolutely beyond easier. Maybe more difficult for LeBron James because he wants to sell sneakers and do it all with child labor. Yeah, that's maybe difficult for him, but for us... No, things are easier than ever before when the divide, the schism, the delineation, and the bifurcation between them and those that love America has gotten so far apart, the gap has grown. It's easier. Evan, it's gotten more difficult to navigate the culture war. To that I say, no. No, it hasn't. Number two. We don't want to get bogged down into who's right, who's wrong. Why not? Why are you not willing to tackle that? Why not? We don't want to get bogged down. Then why do anything besides sell coffee? Here's the challenge. Here's the tough part. See, they say they want to sell coffee. And even in this video, he's like, we just want to roast great coffee. <laughs> and then he talks about all this other stuff. 
If you're gonna be a coffee salesman, sell your bleeping coffee and shut up. But when you start doing all this other stuff, you can't do all of that, call me repugnant, and then go, wait, wait, wait a while. We don't wanna get bogged down. I don't know why I'm giving Evan a Southern accent, I can't help it. We don't wanna get bogged down in any of this culture war stuff. Yeah, I'm too late, you already did it. You already did it. And my favorite, well, maybe he's my second favorite. He did say this, we're not into racist and we would gladly pay racists to go away. I think what's interesting, fine by that, I'm, I'm, except for the paying them part. How do you get to the point in life where you make so much money that your response is just pay somebody to go away? I thought that was really, really interesting. When you were like lighting cigars with rolled up 50s and you're like, pay them to go away, lovey. Pish posh, pish posh with the racist. What time's the clam bake? Hey Matt, what time is the clam bake in Malibu? <laughs> I thought that was an interesting response to hit, hit immediately with, I just pay him to go away. And my favorite one, oh, this was so good. It's all on there, it's all on the Instagram. He was talking about conforming to this culture, that conf culture, conforming to woke culture, conforming to this culture. And he goes, we're not conforming to those folks and we're not conforming to woke culture. We're not conforming to this. We're conforming to Black Rifle. What does that even mean? We're conforming to Black Rifle. I literally have nothing. Let me know down below what you think. I, I can't, I, I. We're conforming to Black Rifle, lovey.